string quartet number one isn't in fact his first string quartet, confusingly. Uh, he wrote dozens of them as a child and continued writing string quartets um, through his college days in the early 1930s. But this one is the first string quartet from his mature period and the first one he gave an opus number two. It's one of Britain's American works and it was commissioned by a remarkable woman, Elizabeth Sprague Coolidge, who commissioned a lot of 20th century music. Uh, and Britain uh, knew her through Frank Bridge. She'd been a patron of Britain's former teacher. And, she, and uh, Bridge's relationship with her is one of the reasons that Britain was on her radar when he went over to the USA. Uh, and he wrote this piece in California in 1941. But I'm just going to look at the beginning of the piece, which is an extraordinary way to start a string quartet. It's very difficult for the players, uh, but it has a tremendous impact in performance. It begins with the three upper strings, the two violins and the viola, quite near the top of their register in a tone cluster, these three notes played together. And it just continues with those three notes for some time. And the tempo moves from being four in a bar to three in a bar to five in a bar. So you never quite know where you are uh, in the tempo. And underneath that, the cello uh, is playing just little plucked chords uh, and eventually does an arpeggio figure. This opening segues into a much brisker section but it keeps being drawn back into this very slow stillness. So it's overall it's a disconcerting movement uh, but it shows a composer who has no doubt at all about what he's doing um, and isn't afraid to slow things right down and really listen just to the sound of time passing. Mm -hmm. 